Breaking, top globalist tyrant just found dead. One of the biggest threats to America as we know it has come down to one man, who sought out to destroy all that this country holds dear and is true to our constitution. With globalism as the goal, he brought hell into this country with his sinister, divisive, plans, that nearly brought the U.S. down. However, death beat him to that end goal in what's likely the perfect twist of fate, before more people lost their own lives to what he had put into motion. This man was not only America's worst enemy to freedom, he also posed the same threat to other nations who suffered worse under his self-imposed power. The man behind mass migration and multiculturalism that has completely changed the look of Europe for the worse, which was on track to repeat that process here in America has died. The ultimate equalizer does not discriminate based on any amount of money or power, as has now been proven with this sudden fatality. You could call his passing karma or perfect timing as he died before he could destroy the free world like he managed to do in Europe. Breitbart reports of the shocking, sudden news that has the whole world cheering. Peter Sutherland, the notorious mass migration and multiculturalism campaigner dubbed the father of globalization, has died. Sutherland, 71, was a key player on a host of globalist bodies and multinational corporations including the European Commission, the World Trade Organization, WTO, and Goldman Sachs International, throughout his life. Peter Sutherland As the United Nations Special Representative for Migration and Non-Executive Chairman of Goldman Sachs International in 2012, he infamously remarked that the European Union should be doing its best to undermine the sense of national homogeneity in Britain and Europe in order to pave the way for multicultural societies. The United States, or Australia and New Zealand, are migrant societies and therefore they accommodate more readily those from other backgrounds than we do ourselves, who still nurse a sense of our homogeneity and difference from others, he told the House of Lords. And that's precisely what the European Union, in my view, should be doing its best to undermine. The Ireland-born globalist argued that the supposed threat of an aging population was the key argument, for the development of multicultural states, and that the EU should push mass migration however difficult it may be to explain this to the citizens. Sutherland had previously served on the bloc's unelected executive as European Commissioner for Competition from 1985 to 1989. This comes just a week after Sutherland's globalist, crooked counterpart. George Soros reportedly had a heart attack. While many of us conservative Americans wanted to believe this was the case, there was nothing to confirm he suffered that condition, but there's also nothing out confirming that he's in good health. It's now ironic that that was reported only for Sutherland's very real and unexpected death to come almost exactly a week later. George Soros Breitbart continues Sutherland is a celebrated figure among neoliberals and hardline free traders for his work presiding over the Uruguay round negotiations of the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade GADT, the predecessor to the WTO. This saw tariffs on agriculture, textiles, services, and so on reduced, and new rules on international arbitration and intellectual property introduced. Corporates and idealistic free marketeers were overjoyed with figures like the pioneering Brexit campaigner Sir James Goldsmith serving as lonely voices for economic nationalism. The GATT did increase economic activity worldwide, and the European Commission took the unusual step of personally rebuking Sir James, asserting that all economic activity is productive, regardless of the harm caused by the mass outsourcing of industry and manufacturing to sweatshop economies. The entrepreneur disagreed complaining that the politicians and technocrats who govern us, concentrate their political, economic and social programs on initiatives whose principal purpose is to make GNP grow quantitatively, without regard to its impact on society, and observed that they seemed unable to distinguish between a nation and a commercial enterprise. Source may have outlived his globalist counterpart as they are literally one in the same when it comes to seriously evil intentions. However, his time is coming too which could be before his globalist dreams of multiculturalism and foreign migration come to fruition. It's not what's good for America, and like Sutherland, Soros doesn't care. Both had other stakes in that destructive game.
as long as it benefits them, they don't care how many countries it destroys. For that reason, karma certainly caught up to Sutherland and will soon be the same for Soros. No money or power can buy his way out of the fate the Grim Reaper is about to bring him, bring him.